Welcome viewers. Have you ever noticed the voltages of the dry cells we are using for wall clocks, remote controls, calculators, etc.? If you look carefully at the body of a cell, then you can easily find its voltage. A few commonly found voltages are 1.5 volt, 1.2 volt, 2.0 volt and 3.7 volt. Now, the question is if the voltages of individual cells are so small, then how do we attain higher voltages for our laptops or our car bike batteries? Actually, the answer lies in the question itself. Batteries are combinations of cells. So, in today's program, we are going to discuss the different combinations of cells. Let us consider the series combination first. So, we have two cells being connected in series that their EMFs are E1 and E2 respectively and their internal resistances are R1 and R2 respectively. That the terminals of the cell E1 are A and B and terminal of the cell B are B and C. So, if we consider that the current through this combination is I and we write the equation of potential difference across the cell E1, then we will obtain as the potential difference is VAB, VAB will be equal to VA minus VB and which will be equal to E1 minus IR1. Let us number this as equation 1. Now, we will write the same equation for the cell E2 and as you can see the potential difference across the cell E2 is VBC. So, we write VBC equals VB minus VC which in turn be equal to E2 minus I times R2. Let us number this as equation number 2. If we wish to obtain the potential difference across the combination, then it will be VAC and the potential difference VAC will be equal to VA minus VC. If we add the equation number 1 and 2, then we can get VA minus VC, since while adding these two equations, the term VB will be cancelled out. So, adding equation 1 and 2 we get VA minus VB plus VB minus VC. So, these terms get cancelled out and we are left with VA minus VC only, which equals E1 minus IR1 plus E2 minus IR2. Separating the EMF terms together, we have E1 plus E2 minus I R1 plus R2. So, we get VAC as this, that is the potential difference between the terminals A and C. If we number this equation as equation number 3 and we wish to replace this combination of cell by a single cell having EMF E equivalent and having internal resistance R equivalent, then the equation will be VAC equals E equivalent minus IR equivalent. Let us number it as equation number 4. If we compare equation number 3 and 4, then we can get the expression for E equivalent, which is equal to E1 plus E2 as well as for R equivalent, which is R1 plus R2. So, E equivalent equals E1 plus E2 and R equivalent equals R1 plus R2. So, this is the rule for the series combination of cells. What if the same poles are connected together? Like, if the negative of the two cells are connected together, here you can see the positive and negative terminals were connected together, but, but what 
if we have negative terminals connected together. In that case, the net EMF is given by E1 minus E2. Here we have assumed that E1 is greater than E2, whereas the equivalent resistance still remains the same. That is R equivalent equals R1 plus R2. The rule for series combination clearly can be extended to any numbers of cells. Next, consider a parallel combination of cells. Let we have two cells being connected in parallel. EMFs of the cells are E1 and E2 respectively and their internal resistances are R1 and R2. The two cells are connected between the points B1 and B2. Let the current drawn from the first cell is I1 and the current drawn from the second cell is I2. Let the total current is I. Since current is due to the flow of electric charges and electric charges are conserved. So, we can say the amount of charge reaching the terminal B1 from current I1 and I2 will also be leaving the junction B1. Hence, I will be equal to I1 plus I2. Let us number it as equation 1. The two cells are connected between points B1 and B2. So, potential difference across both of the cells is obviously the same. Let that potential difference is V. Now, writing the equation for the cell E1, we get V equals E1 minus I1 R1. This equation can be written in terms of current also and in terms of current, it becomes I1 R1 equal to E1 minus V or I1 equals E1 minus V upon R1. Let us number this equation as equation number 2. The similar equation can be written for the cell E2 also and that equation is I2 equals E2 minus V upon R2. Let us number it as equation number 3. So, equation number 1 says I equals I1 plus I2 and from 2 and 3, we can get the values of I1 and I2. So, combining these 3 equations, we get combining 1, 2 and 3, we get I equals E1 minus V upon R1 plus E2 minus V upon R2. We can also write it like E1 upon R1 plus E2 upon R2 and out of the second and fourth term, we can take minus V as a common term and then we get 1 upon R1 plus 1 upon R2. This equation can also be written in terms of voltage. If we wish to write voltage equal to something, then we can express it in that form also. In that form, it will appear like V times 1 upon R1 plus 1 upon R2 equals E1 by R1 plus E2 by R2 minus I or V equals E1 by R1 plus E2 by R2 and this term being divided by 1 upon R1 plus 1 upon R2. Similarly, when I will be divided by this term. So, let us number this equation as say 4. 
So, let us rewrite the equation number 4. Equation number 4 is V equals E1 by R1 plus E2 by R2 upon 1 upon R1 plus 1 upon R2 minus I upon 1 upon R1 plus 1 upon R2. If we want to replace the combination by a single cell between B1 and B2 of EMF E equivalent and internal resistance R equivalent, we would have V equals E equivalent minus I R equivalent. If we compare the two equations, then we can get the expression for E equivalent, which on solving will give E equivalent equals E1 R2 plus E2 R1 upon R1 plus R2, whereas comparison of R equivalent will give R equivalent equal to R1 R2 upon R1 plus R2. So, these are the two expressions for the equivalent EMF and the equivalent resistance. These two expressions can also be written in a different form. So, let us write that form also. We can put these equations in a different way and it is 1 upon R equivalent equals 1 upon R1 plus 1 upon R2 and in terms of EMF, E equivalent upon R equivalent equals E1 upon R1 plus E2 upon R2. This expression can be generalized for any number of cells. Well, uh, let us solve a few problems now. 6 lead acid type of secondary cells each of EMF 2 volt and internal resistance 0 0.015 ohm are joined in series. So, we have 6 cells, each one of them being of 2 volt EMF and internal resistance of each one of them is 0 0.015 ohm. If this combination is connected across an external resistance of 8.5 ohm, then we have to calculate number 1, the total current drawn from this combination and number 2, the terminal voltage. Let I be the current. We also have to calculate the terminal voltage. V. Okay. To calculate current, we know that I will be equal to E equivalent divided by the total resistance, which is capital R plus the net internal resistance small r. So, since we have got 6 cells in series, so equivalent EMF will be equal to 12 volt, R is 8.5 ohm. Whereas, the net equivalent internal resistance is 6 times of this resistance that is 6 into 0.015 ohm. If we calculate this, then it turns out to be approximately 1.4 ampere. Now, moving ahead. In second part, we have to calculate the terminal voltage. So, by having the value of current, we can easily calculate the terminal voltage as terminal voltage equals E equivalent minus I R equivalent. And E equivalent as we have already calculated is 12 volt, I is 1.4 ampere and R equivalent is this term 6 into 0 0.015, that is 0 0.009. On putting the value of E equivalent, we have 12 minus I 
which we have already calculated is 1.4 volt and R equivalent is the series combination of these 6 resistors which gives 6 multiplied by the individual resistance that is 0 0.015. If we calculate this value then it turns out to be 11.9 volt. So, this is our second answer. Now, let us solve one more numerical problem. Let a secondary cell after long use has an EMF of 1.9 volt and a large internal resistance of 380 ohm. Let this be the cell of EMF 1.9 volt and it has a very large internal resistance of 380 ohm. Then the question is that what maximum current can be drawn from this cell. So, the current I can be given by E divided by external resistance plus the internal resistance. In order to get the maximum current, the external resistance should be 0. So, I max is E upon R and as per the question, E is 1.9 volt and R is 380 ohm. If we calculate it, then it comes out to be 0 0.005 ampere, which is obviously a very small value of current. Now, the second part of the question is, could the cell drive the starting motor of a car? Well, current needed to start a car's motor is more than 100 ampere. So, obviously, this current is very small and it is not sufficient to start the motor of a car. Moreover, even a series combination of cells is not appropriate to start a motor because series combination increases the net internal resistance and hence decreases current. In car batteries, we use mixed combinations of cells which increases the voltage but does not increase the net internal resistance. Now, let us move to the next question. A cell of EMF E and internal resistance R is connected across an external resistance R. And in, this, and in this question, we have to plot a curve between the potential difference across the resistor R and the value of the resistor R. So, here we have to plot a curve of V versus R. As we are aware that V or the terminal potential difference is given by V equals E minus I R. So, how is V affected by the value of R? Let us imagine first that R is very small, that is this value of R is very small. In that case, the current drawn from the cell will be very high and the current drawn could be as high as the product I R may be equal to E. In that case, the voltage will be 0. So, if capital R is approaching 0, in that case, current is approaching a significant value and I R is approaching E that is V is approaching 0. So, if R is very small, we will be having V as close to 0. Now, the second case, if capital R that is the external resistance has a very high value. In that case, capital R being high, the current I will be very small and if R is as high as approaching infinity, in that case, the current I will be approaching 0 and V will be approaching E. So, with these two conditions, R being small, V being close to 0, R being close to infinity, V being close to E, we can plot the curve of V versus R. Let 
this line represents the value of EMF. For a small value of R, we have potential difference close to 0 and for a very high value, we can see that potential difference is approaching E. So with this argument, we can draw the curve as this. As R goes on to increase, potential difference goes on to approach E. We always solve many more textbook and exemplar problems based on the combinations of cells. You may also try to find out the combinations of the cells in an inverter battery and a laptop battery. Check out the EMF of every cell and battery which you see and also try to figure out that whether it is a cell or a battery. If we have to find out the value of current in a simple circuit like the one you can see in this image, then we can easily find it by using Ohm's law. But when the circuits become complicated, then it becomes extremely difficult to find the value of current. You can see this in the next picture. Here it is extremely difficult to find the resultant resistance and the resultant EMF and hence to find the current. To solve such complicated circuits, two rules called Kirchhoff's rules are very useful. Let us study about Kirchhoff's rules. Let us draw a complicated circuit first. So here we have our circuit. In this circuit, we have three distinct branches. One is AHD, which will be carrying the same current. The other branch is ABCD, which will be carrying again the same current. And the branch AFED will also be carrying a constant current. Let us name these currents as in this branch, let the current be I3, which will be same throughout. Let the current in this branch is I1, which will again be same throughout and let the current in this arm is I2. Before understanding the rules, let us distribute the current in the circuit. So moving ahead, we now state the rules. First one is called as Kirchhoff's junction rule. The statement of junction rule is that at any junction, the sum of the currents entering the junction is equal to the sum of the current leaving the junction. As you can see, at this junction A, the current approaching is I3, whereas the current leaving the junction are I1 plus I2. So as per the rule, we have I3 equals I1 plus I2. The rule can be applied at any of the junctions. If we wish to apply it at the junction D, then let us investigate the currents close to D. In this branch, we have current I3 throughout. In this branch, we have current I1. And in this branch, we have current I2, which is approaching the junction D. Kirchhoff's junction rule states that the current approaching is same as the current leaving. So here, the currents approaching are I1 and I2, and the current leaving is I3. So we can write I1 plus I2 equals I3. This rule simply follows the fact that for steady current, there is no accumulation of charge at any junction and hence the charge coming in and going out at the junction is the same and so is the current. Now comes the second rule. The second rule is called as loop rule and its statement is the algebraic sum of changes in potential around a closed loop involving resistors and cells in the loop is 0. Let us consider a loop A H D, C, B, A. So in this loop, the sum of all the potential drops will be 0. There may be some other loop like A, G, F, E, D, C, B, A. Even in this loop, the sum of the potential drops will be 0. So let us apply this in the upper loop. That is, we have started from A, then reached the point H. So A, H proceeded to D, C, B and then came back to point A. So A, H, D, C, B, A is the name of the loop and we are going to apply that the algebraic sum of all the potential drops is equal to 0. So the first component that we encounter while moving from A to H is this resistor of 30 ohm. Since we are moving in the direction of current, hence there will be a negative potential difference when we move along 
the resistor as we are aware that current moves in the decreasing potential direction. So the potential difference across this resistor is using Ohm's law it is 30 into I1 and since we are moving in the direction of current, so we put a negative sign in front of it. Then there is not any component here just connection wires, no voltage drop across connection wires. Then we reach a cell and in cell we are moving from negative to positive terminal. So obviously the potential difference will be positive since the positive terminal is at a higher voltage as compared to the negative terminal. So here we get plus 45 since the EMF of the cell is given to be 45. The third component we encounter is 1 ohm resistance. Again we are moving in the direction of current. So we again put a negative sign in front of it and its value is I into R, R is 1 ohm and the current in this branch is I3. The last component in the loop is this 40 ohm resistance and for this we can write minus 40 I3. As per the loop rule, the sum of all these voltages should be 0. Similarly, we can form some more equations. We can form an equation for this circuit and by solving those linear equations, we can find the value of current. This rule is also obvious since electric potential is dependent on the location of the point. The starting point and the finishing point along a loop is the same. Hence, the potential difference will obviously be the same. As we start from point A, ultimately we reach the point A only. So the potential difference is obviously 0. Let us try to solve one more problem now. To solve a circuit, first we need to distribute the current. So it is obvious that we take the current to be coming out of the positive terminal of the given battery or cell. So here we have a 10 volt cell like the current coming out of the terminal is I1. Then the current going towards AB is suppose I2 and applying Kirchhoff's junction rule at this junction if I1 is the current reached and I2 is the current leaving then rest of the current will be going in this direction that is I1 minus I2. Okay, let us consider the path of this current. This current reaches the point B and let again the 5 volt cell supplies a current I3. At junction B, these two are the incoming currents I2 plus I3. So the same amount of current will be leaving also. So the current leaving is I2 plus I3. Now let us talk about the junction C here I2 plus I3 is the current reaching and I1 is the current leaving. So again applying junction rule we can say that the current leaving this junction will be I2 plus I3 minus I. So after this distribution of current in order to find the current let us have a look at how many variables we have in this equation. So we have three variables or three unknown quantities those are I1, I2 and I3. So in order to find the value of three unknown quantities we need to form three equations and to form the equations we will be using Kirchhoff's voltage rule. So let us select three loops first and apply Kirchhoff's loop rule to get the three equations. So let the first loop is a, B, C, A. In loop A, B, C, A, we move from A to B, then to C and then to A. And Kirchhoff's loop rule suggests that algebraic sum of all the potential drops is equal to 0. So across this component, we have a potential drop of 4 times I2, but since we are moving in the direction of current, so it is a negative voltage. So we have minus 4 I2. While moving from B to C, again we are moving in the direction of current. So the voltage is negative and its value is again I into R. So twice of I2 plus 
I3. Then we have to move from C to A. The next component we encounter with is this 4 ohm resistance which is carrying a current I1. So, voltage is again negative and it is I into R that is 4 times I1. Next we encounter this cell and its voltage is plus 10 volt since we are finally reaching the positive terminal. And this all add up to give 0. Let us simplify this equation a bit. We have term I1 only once. So, we have written it at the first place. Then we have 6 times I2 and we have 2 times I3 plus 10 equal to 0. Let us number this as equation 1. As you can see, we have obtained an equation between I1, I2 and I3 by applying Kirchhoff's loop rule in this junction. Similarly, we can apply this rule, Kirchhoff's loop rule in the other two junctions. Similarly, we can apply this Kirchhoff's loop rule in other two loops. Okay, repeat. Similarly, we can apply this Kirchhoff's loop rule in other two loops also. Let the first, let the second loop is ACDA and the other loop is BEDCB. Following the same procedure, we will again be getting two equations in I1, I2 and I3. Solving these three linear equations, we can find the value of electric current. Moving ahead, we will apply Kirchhoff's rules to a special network of resistors which is called as Wheatstone bridge. Then we will try to understand that how can an unknown resistance be found using this network. So, let us discuss Wheatstone bridge. It consists of four resistors R1, R2, R3 and R4 being connected in such a combination. Between these vertices, we have a battery and this arm is called as the battery arm. Between the remaining vertex, we have a galvanometer. Let us then, let us number the terminals as let us name the terminals as A, B, C, D and let us name this battery as E. In general situations, when the battery is connected, the current will be flowing through all these resistors as well as through the galvanometer arm. But we consider a special case in which the resistors are so arranged that we do not get any value of current through the galvanometer arm. In that case, if the current through the resistor R1 is I1, through R2 is through R2 is I2, this current be I3 and let this current be I4. So, if the value of resistors are so arranged that there is no current through the galvanometer arm, then obviously current I2 and I4 will be the same since no current is leaking through the galvanometer. Also, we will be having I1 and I3 being the same. Now, if we apply the Kirchhoff's loop rule across the junction A, B, D, A, Following the same condition as galvanometer having no current, we will get from A to B, we will have minus R2 I2. While moving across galvanometer, we do not have any current, so no voltage drop. While moving from D to A, we have plus I1 R1 and it equals to 0. This expression can be written as I1 by I2 equals R2 by R1. 
let us number it as equation number 1. Similarly, we will apply the loop rule in the loop BCDB and let us see what do we get. Again, we have imagined the current to be 0. So, in BCDB, we have along the direction of current negative value of voltage drop. So, while moving from B to C, moving along the direction of current, we get negative value of voltage that is minus R4, I4. From C to D, we are moving opposite to the direction of current. So, we get positive voltage that is I3, R3 and it equals 0 as per loop rule. From here, we can easily see that I3 by I4 equals R4 by R3. Let us number it as equation 2. But as we have already seen that in case no current is there through the galvanometer, I2 and I4 will be the same and I1 and I3 will also be the same. So, replacing I3 by I1 in this equation and replacing I4 by I2 in this equation, we get I1 by I2 as R4 by R3. Let us this be equation number 3. Now, comparing equation 1 and 3, on left hand side we have I1 by I2. On right hand side, in first equation we have R2 by R1 and in second equation we have R4 by I3. Now, by comparing equation number 1 and equation 3, we get R2 by R1 equals R4 by R3. This is a special condition for a Wheatstone bridge in which we do not get any current through the galvanometer arm. And in this condition, the bridge is said to be balanced. This last equation relating the four resistors is called as the balance condition for the galvanometer to give zero or null deflection. This equation gives us a method to find out an unknown resistance R4. In case of a balanced bridge, if R1, R2 and R3 are known, then obviously we can find out R4. In older times, this method of balanced Wheatstone bridge was used in post offices for sending information. I leave you with the task to find out that how was this method used. Thank you.